Hello, in this video I will tell you how to make a DIY speaker driver. First, I make a Kevlar carbon fiber cone. I add a single layer of fiber on a mold, and I coat it with epoxy resin. Then I let it dry for a day. I make sure that there is no air bubbles on the resin, and that the temperature is suitable for the epoxy to dry. Remember to wear sufficient safety equipment when you do this. The magnet structure can be built in few different ways, as shown in the picture. You can cut metal pipes and bars to make them. The size and type of the coil gap will have an effect on the strength and linearity of the magnetic force. The metal parts should have high permeability and magnetic saturation. Pure iron would probably be the best, but as it's hard to obtain, I used S355 steel. The magnets can be ferrite or neodymium. Neodymium is lighter and stronger. Ferrite is heavier and weaker, but as the magnets are bigger, they act as a better heat sink than neodymium. When I glued the magnets and steel parts together using super epoxy, I used paper and cocktail sticks to prevent the magnets from getting stuck to any wrong place. Be careful with strong magnets, they can easily break your fingers. I cut a strip from an aluminium can, to make the voice coil former. Here you can also see the cones. Then I wound a thin copper wire around the former, to make the voice coil. I coated the coils with epoxy resin. For woofers and mids, I used 0.2mm wire and for the tweeters, I used 0.1mm wire. I drilled a little holes on the former, for better ventilation. The spiders were one of the only parts I didn't make myself. I tested to place the coil in the gap with the spider, to find the best coil position where it does not rub the edges of the gap. Then I glued it carefully. I used a plywood ring as a platform for the spider. I made the frame for the driver, by cutting a steel funnel with Dremel. Then I glued the frame on its place. I also soldered some flexible wires to the voice coil, so they can be attached to the terminals of the driver, without causing any unwanted sounds from the wires vibrating. Then I carefully glued the cone in top of the voice coil. It's already working. I still needed to add a dust cap on it, so I made one from a bottom of a can. I also made a surround from EPDM rubber. However, it was too stiff, and it killed the base. So I ordered a real surround part from the internet. I placed a metal ring inside the frame, so that I could attach the surround on it.
The driver is ready. Time to calculate some TILA small parameters to help in the design of the enclosure. I also measured the impedance curve for the speaker. However, what you see in this video is a failed measurement. Here are some parts I used for the mid drivers. I used ferrite ring magnets, and I made the frame from some ventilation duct parts. Again, I used cocktail sticks to keep all parts on their places until the glue is hardened. The drivers had quite a high Q values, and I didn't want to make open baffle speakers, so I decided to make an aperiodic enclosure to damp them a little. I used some wooden bowls from IKEA to make a spherical enclosure. As the enclosure was aperiodic, I had to fill it with mineral wool and cut a vent hole in the back. The vent hole was then covered with wool, as it is acoustically resistant and thus able to damp the movement of the driver. I also had to make a crossover for the speaker system. My first tweeter design didn't really work out. The coil was too heavy, and it couldn't go as high as needed. It was also too silent compared to other drivers. So I made a new design, with a polypropylene dome made out of a ping pong ball. It turned out to be surprisingly good. Finally, I added 3D printed waveguides to the tweeters, and attached the tweeters to the system using a gooseneck, so I can turn them to any direction I want. Here is some sound demo of the complete project. They sound pretty good, but of course, it's hard to show on this video.
I would like to thank Sorin, the electrical nerd for this idea, check out his DIY speaker driver video too. Thank you for watching. There's a lot of technical information I didn't include on this video, to keep this nicer to watch. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments section. I will include some useful information and some links in the description too. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe my channel, I mostly upload music, but I also make DIY videos every now and then. Until next time, bye bye.